Hi, it's Thursday evening, October 6th, and here's Hurricane Matthew on visible satellite imagery just before the sun sets, showing the eye of Matthew just over the western end of Grand Bahama Island. This remains a powerful Category 4 hurricane with sustained winds of 130 miles per hour as of the NHC 8 p.m. update. This continues on a general track toward the north-northwest, and if we look at radar right now out of Wonderground, this shows uh, the hurricane eye again just over the western end of this island. A buoy north of Freeport is showing sustained winds of about 80 miles per hour right now, and the very worst winds of Matthew in this red area, the northeastern eyewall, uh, are hitting Grand Bahama Island very close to Freeport at this moment. For the northern Bahama Islands, uh, the eye will begin to start moving away over the next several hours hours and conditions will gradually improve, but hurricane force winds are possible for a few hours yet in some of these northern islands. We notice an interesting structure tonight as Hurricane Matthew has developed concentric eye walls. You can kind of see the inner eye here and then this outer ring that you can you might be able to make out in orange and yellow here. So there are double eye walls at this time and what this usually means for the hurricane is that it will struggle to strengthen further and what usually happens is this outer eye wall will essentially start choking out the inner eye and eventually perhaps take over as the dominant eye wall and contract inward. Now this doesn't change much for the hurricane strength at the moment but what it may do is cause an expansion of the hurricane force wind field as this larger eye wall will become wider than the inner one once it takes over and so we could see damaging winds from Matthew get spread over a larger area. Uh, so as the system moves up toward the coast of central Florida, uh, it has greater potential to spread hurricane force winds farther inland along some of these counties. This doesn't change the overall threat that we've expected. Different wobbles to the track could bring it closer or farther away to different portions of the coastline, but in general this track toward the central Florida coastline is expected to continue through the overnight hours and into tomorrow. It's important to note that the inner eye is going to look like it takes wobbles from time to time. On this particular loop it may look like it's moving due west for a time and then it starts looking like it's moving due north over Grand Bahama Island. These are somewhat deceptive wobbles as what's happening is the inner eye is essentially orbiting around the inner rim of this outer ring of thunderstorms and so it can it, it can make the motion of the hurricane look erratic but the overall direction that the core of the storm is heading continues to be in the longer term toward the north northwest which will bring it very close to the central florida coastline uh, sometime tonight or tomorrow this is the recon data from the aircraft continuing to show that motion that we just spoke of toward the north northwest uh, the pressure remains just under 940 millibars here, pretty steady strength at the moment. The hurricane is not appreciably weakening or strengthening, but again, the wind field may be expanding a little bit. Everything in purple here is hurricane force winds at flight level. Those winds will be a little bit weaker at the actual surface of the ocean or the landmass as it may be, but this gives you a general idea of the size of the dangerous wind field of the hurricane. And again, this is all coming toward the central Florida coastline tonight and tomorrow. Tropical storm conditions have already moved into portions of southeast Florida as different bands rotate through on the radar here and power outages are already beginning to occur as far south as Miami. And this will uh, only get a little worse as the night goes on as uh, the hurricane will get closer to the coast over time. This is the current forecast track from the Hurricane Center, again showing that very close passage to the Space Coast and very close to most of these counties along the entire eastern coast of Florida. Hurricane warnings up for all of the eastern Florida coastline from Broward County northward and the inland counties from Okeechobee through Orlando and up to Jacksonville. And we have hurricane warnings now extending through the entirety of Georgia and up through uh, Charleston and slightly northeast of Charleston, South Carolina. The hurricane's track expected to be very close to the coastlines in all of these places. The primary threat from Matthew remains storm surge along the coast, especially up in the northern part of Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina, where the coast is concave shaped, which means that the wind will pile water up into this curved area of coastline, especially high compared to other areas. And the current inundation map potential from the NHC shows these colors in orange and red indicating storm surge inundation above six or even nine feet potentially in some areas from Matthew. This is water above ground level, six to nine or even higher amounts above ground, which can wash away entire houses. So please, if you're in a surge zone, please evacuate or obey the orders of your local emergency management officials. This is not going to be uh, any fun 
over this area of coastline and surge perhaps down over the central and southern parts of Florida is also possible, perhaps a little bit less than up here, but still a big deal. Even three feet of water above ground is huge near the coast. We also have potential for inland rainfall up to 10 or more inches across portions of North Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina. These areas are especially flood prone in South Carolina, as was illustrated last year during the rains that occurred at the same time that Hurricane Joaquin was out here. And we saw extensive flooding near and northwest of Charleston, and this could be the case again with Matthew. Uh, if rain falls inland, even if the core of the hurricane remains offshore, inland flooding could become a serious problem. And as it stands, the hurricane forecast track, uh, hurricane center forecast track, is very close to the coastlines of Georgia and South Carolina, so significant impacts from wind as well as water could still occur as far northeast as Charleston or even farther up the coastline before the hurricane is expected to turn out over the open ocean to the east as it weakens. So please stay safe during dangerous Hurricane Matthew and stay up to date with your local forecast office and emergency management officials for the latest information for your particular area. All right, that's it for tonight. Thanks for watching.